Hello everyone, I am Renz Hui Lu from Xiamen University. Here I will introduce our work on multi-exposure image fusion named EMEF. Our proposed method EMEF takes advantage of the wisdom of multiple imperfect MEF contributors including both conventional and deep learning based methods. The luminance level varies greatly between the brightest and the darkest region in a real-world scene, which is called the high dynamic range. The images captured by our camera usually have a low dynamic range, LDR, due to the limitation of imaging sensors. LDR images often suffer from overexposure and underexposure. The multi-exposure fusion task, MEF, aims to fuse a sequence of LDR images into a single HDR image. Pixel-based methods work on the pixel level, calculating the weighted sum of source images to derive a fused image. Different from pixel-based methods, patch-based methods work on the patch level. Optimization-based methods fuse source images by optimizing carefully designed handcrafted metrics. Transform domain-based methods firstly transform source images to a specific domain to get their implicit representations, then fuse these representations and finally convert the fusion results back to the spatial domain by an inverse transform. Researchers attempt to synthesize ground truth by adjusting the pixel intensity of source images or generating fusion results of existing methods and manually select the visually best one as ground truth. Unsupervised methods fuse the source images under the guidance of a specific image assessment metric. Pre-train-based methods train models in other tasks to learn image representations and then fuse these representations to reconstruct the final result. MEF-SSIM is a metric commonly used by unsupervised methods, which measures how much vital information from input images can be preserved in the fused image. It focuses on luminance, contrast, and structure. A slide windows mechanism is applied to improve its performance. As mentioned above, previous works rely on ground truth data, metrics, and strategies. But actually, it's not easy to get them. There is no real ground truth data and no one-size-fits-all fusion strategy. The quality of fusion results is too subjective to be evaluated by metrics. So, instead of utilizing any synthesized ground truth, designing any metric, or developing any fusion strategy, our proposed method EMEF takes advantage of the wisdom of multiple imperfect MEF contributors. The fusion results of FMF, Fusion DN, and MGFF respectively exhibit more meaningful structures in the stone arch, roof, and ground regions, which are highlighted by the red bounding boxes. And they behave well in different metrics. This is our pipeline. EMEF consists of two main stages pre-train an imitator network, and tune the imitator in the runtime. First of all, we collect data for stage 1 training. For a pair of overexposed and underexposed images, we use all the MEF target methods in the ensemble to produce their fusion images. In the first stage, we utilize a unified network to imitate multiple MEF methods with the data we prepared. We view each MEF target method as a style and then train a style modulated GAN in a supervised way. Such a network can produce a very similar fusion result with each target method in the ensemble, under the control of a style code. The style code determines which target methods the network would imitate, and is represented by the random soft label to improve the generalization ability. SSIM loss and adversarial loss are utilized to train the imitator network. In the second stage, we create a learnable style code with all one initialization and then freeze the pre-trained imitator network and search for the optimal style code by optimizing MEF-SSIM loss in the gradient descent way. Finally, EMEF is able to produce the best fusion result from the combined space of the MEF target methods. We leverage the merit of style GAN2 to construct SCB. SCB consists of a convolution layer and two operations, modulation and demodulation, to its weights. Following style GAN, we get latent code from style code and get style from latent code. In the weight modulation, we multiply the style by the weight of the convolution layer to inject style into the activation. 
In the weight demodulation, we shrink the weight to keep the statistics of activation unchanged. Here we show the result of stage 1. There is little visual difference between the output of our imitator network and the fusion result of the target method. Similar to multitask learning, the imitation results are slightly better than the fusion result of the target method in evaluation metrics. Intuitively, we use the one hot label as the style code in the imitator network pre training. However, the optimized style codes obtained in the imitator tuning stage are usually floats rather than integers. The significant domain gap between the style codes in pre-training and tuning introduces severe artifacts. To overcome this issue, we adopt a soft label trick that can mitigate the domain gap and promote robustness. We replace the one value in the one hot label with a random number in the range of 0.5 to 1 and replace the zero value with a random number in the range of 0 to 0 0.5. After that, the artifacts are removed successfully. Here we explain why soft label works in artifact removal. Training with hard label makes the major region of the latent space meaningless. When we step into such a region, we get artifacts. Soft label map a wider range of values to the same result which expands the meaningful region in the latent space. So we will no longer step into a meaningless region and no longer get artifacts. The relationship with supervised MEF is that, the supervised MEF methods directly optimize the reconstruction loss between the fusion result and the ground truth. However, the ground truth is usually artificially made. Our proposed EMEF uses the supervised way only for imitating different MEF targets in a unified framework, but not for generating the fusion result. The relationship with Ensemble GAN is that, EMEF is a brand new ensemble framework. Now let's talk about the relationship with unsupervised MEF, given that we have an imperfect ruler, MEF SSIM, which can only measure height. Our model is required to draw a tall building. Plan A is to directly draw a tall building with the ruler. Because our model has no idea about how to draw a building, it might draw a tall tree with the ruler. So we get plan B, learn to draw buildings first, and then try to draw a tall building with the ruler. That's exactly what our EMEF does. The main goal of MEF is to make the dark region brighter while making the bright region darker so that more details can be maintained. In this case, the region inside the cave is dark and the region outside is bright. SPDMEF, MEFOPT failed to darken the bright region, while MEFGAN, U2 Fusion failed to brighten the dark region. DSIFTF and TRANSMEF manage to behave well in both regions but exhibit lower contrast and fewer details outside the cave compared with our EMEF. In Sample B, the goal is to provide appropriate exposure for the street lights, the store, and the floor. SIFTF, SPDMEF, MEFOPT, and MEFGAN failed to achieve this goal, as terrible halo artifacts surround the street lights and the store. Our method produces more appealing luminance in the left part of the fused image than U2 fusion. When compared with TRANSMEF, our method generates far finer details in the store and the floor regions. The existing MEF methods are capable to achieve good performance on their preference metrics. Due to the extreme pursuit of these metrics, they usually show poor scores on the remaining metrics. The overall rank is the sum of ranks on all metrics which can reveal overall performance. We integrate four distinctive methods in EMEF so that they compensate each other. Thus our method has a relatively all-round ability on all metrics, ultimately presenting balanced and optimal overall performance. Apart from the four methods in the ensemble, we evaluate another four methods in the ablation study. First, we select the MEF result directly from the outputs of the four methods in the ensemble with the highest MEF SSIM score. We call it PIC IGT. Second, we select the MEF result directly from the four imitation results of the imitator network with the highest MEF SSIM score. We call it PIC IO. Third, we optimize the latent code instead of the style code. Fourth, 
we replace the soft label with the hard label. In sample A, MGFF and Fusion DN fail to brighten the dark regions in the sea, while FMF and IFCNN don't recover more details in the sky compared with ours. The method of optimizing latent code jumps out of the pret rain space which introduces severe color distortion. And the method without soft label brings artifacts in the boat region. In sample B, MGFF fails to brighten the dark region in the grass, FMF and IFCNN exhibit a little overexposure in the grass, and Fusion DN generates an image of low contrast and poor luminance. In both samples, our method can reconstruct the scene with moderate lighting conditions. Here is the quantitative comparison. Our method surpasses the methods included in the ensemble and the overall performance due to its integrated capabilities. It can be observed that the method of picking IGT prefers to pick FMF since it ranks first in the MEFB. The method of picking I.O. performs better than picking IGT which indicates that the imitator network improves the individual's ability while combining them. The method of optimizing the latent code and the method without soft label behaves badly due to the introduction of color distortion and artifacts. Finally, our EMEF performs the best, which demonstrates the effectiveness of our pipeline and soft label. That's all. Thanks for listening.